I'm here with Craig Little, who is the Mayor of Waro. Kia ora, Craig, and thanks for joining me. Kia ora, Andrew. How are you? Very good, thanks. Now, Craig, we, we spoke last week after the release of the Mike Bush report into the Waro flooding, and you said overall that you were you were happy with, with the report, but there was one point that, that sort of niggled you a little bit. Can you just explain more about your reaction to the report? Yeah, so the report was it generally pretty well got it right, but there's a bit there he refers to the Tonkin Taylor report, which was one of the HBRC funded um, reports that they did, and it, it it mentions a high swell, high high waves, and high spring tide. Well, we've got you know the information from the Met um, Ocean people and others, and that 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 wasn't true. The there were no high spring tides. There were actually no spring tides. Would you believe? There were no high swells, and and they they said what the swells were no less than an annual event, and then the high waves were two hundred mil, which isn't a hell of a lot, but they were actually at low tide, so they weren't at the high tide. So it was very misleading and quite disappointing that they got that so wrong. Um, and and what what I've been saying all along, Andrew, is if you would just come on the scene or you're a newbie, you might think, gosh, these seas are pretty big. And this weather event's pretty big, but if you had that institutional knowledge or had the capability of looking backwards, you would see that that is, has happened before. We've opened the river mouth, and it has worked. Now, Craig, this this subject of how to manage the bar and how, what, when to open and not to open, this is not a new subject, as you say. I mean, this has been investigated over and over and over time over the last, I don't know how many years. Why are we still at this stage? Yeah, I think, you know, it's, it's like a lot of things in society today. We're losing that institutional knowledge that we've had. And, and you know, you think you can be, you can train to something else and then switch over and do another job. And I think that a lot of that's happening in a lot of these organisations. Um, and, you know, the fact of the matter is open the river mouth and, and you will, won't flood. And we live on a, on a basin that floods. And this, this is why way back, you know, as he, you know, I don't know how far back. Just could be just pre uh, around about European times. It could be um, even before that um, that they've done this. So why not keep carrying on doing it? And that's that happens all around the country. It's it's not as if war is a one off. This is quite normal. Um, open the bar and you will save the town. Um, now at the same time that the Bush report was released. The council, um, some may say slightly cynically, uh, released three of their own reports. What do you think of those reports? Oh, look, we, we we probably aren't really interested in those reports. And I'll tell you a couple of things. We we did a report on why we flooded the Andrew Newman report. That was a really good report, and also it had some bits in that report that said what you should do, you know, with the river mouth. They totally disregarded that. And then, interesting enough, one of their reports is a Tonkin Taylor report but what they didn't mention there was another Tonkin Taylor report that came out just before the flooding and that actually gave them the guidelines and if they'd followed those they wouldn't have they wouldn't have got themselves into the position they did um so I so I had to ask the question does the new Tonkin Taylor report um supersede the old one or uh, what are we or we got two opposing reports from the same company so that was a bit of a joke really and Please, when you pay for someone to do a report, it's not really independent. Um, the only independent one for us is the government release uh, Mike Bush report. Now, there is legal action um, currently, a uh, class action suit uh, against the council over this uh, for um, uh, on behalf of various um, residents of Wairau and that. Um, there's also um, the, the government has stepped in and um, appointed Lawrence Yule as uh, Crown Manager. How's Lawrence going? Uh, yeah, he's going pretty good, to be quite honest. He's really getting a bit of um, grunt into the, into, the, into the job. He's, you know, well, he's got, you know, he can't, we, we can't fail in this one, and it's great. He is in charge, and that's probably going to be quite hard for the regional council to work out who's actually running the show, and there's no doubt it's the crown manager. Um, so there's a bit to go, and, you know, he's really stamping his foot on it, and he's, he's, got, a, he's got a good following here in Wairau, and, and he's going to do a good job. I'm pretty certain of that. Um, but it needs to be done. And it's taken far too long. We're, we're 17 months out or 18 months out from Cyclone Gabriel. 
and not a hell of a lot ha- has happened, you know. And um, to now, Lawrence, probably more has happened in a week or two than it has happened for the last six months. And uh, how's your relationship with the regional council now? Because um, clearly you, you, you're you not happy with, with what has happened and with some of the stuff they've done. What's your relationship with like them? With, like um, with them? Yeah, look, look. I, I still talk talk to the CE and the chair and the and the councillors and staff and that. But but unless they absolutely show us some genuine empathy, and yet you know they suggested we, we need to move on now. These reviews have come out. I said yes, we do. But you can't move on without fixing what you've damaged, and 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 actually talking to the people in a, in a genuine way. And you know, otherwise that's like anything. You know, we I, I was very lucky with parents I had. I got brought up in a in an environment that if you did something wrong, you had to, you know, fix it or, or repair it or, or or talk to people you may have hurt. And that hasn't happened. And before that happens, we're dreaming and they need, look, you, every, there's a lot of people that's not happy with the regional council because they feel they've been absent. And I just want them to now, don't hide away, face up to us, and you just can't move on hoping it's all going to go away. So you want an apology from them, or you want an apology to well, the just people something, that were Andrew? Yeah, and that acknowledgement, you know, of something because you know there's a lot of people in Wairau that have got their houses stripped out and that, and that was easy because it probably wasn't they had volunteers and people helping and that. It, no, I wouldn't say easy, but a real heartbreaking job. But now the big big job for them is coming to repair their homes, and they're financially absolutely um, broke, devastated, mentally. Um, you know, really challenging for them, and and there's no one from the regional councils coming to save them, and and now we've got meetings. I see um, there's something in the paper this week, not in the paper. We don't have a paper, but I saw it somewhere, um, saying about um, a, a a meeting for locals, you know, for our insurance and that. But I'm more worried about the ones who aren't insured. Who's going to represent them? And they're the ones. And I don't want to, you know, you don't want to jump on the first boat siling out. You want to make sure the person who's who's representing you is all about them rather than about getting rich quickly. So, yeah, we've got a bit to go yet. So I hope we can help in that. I I hope the regional council is going to really man up and say, hey, well, how can we help? We've had a lot of costs that we wouldn't have normally um, had because of this voting event. And, you know, but there's no one helping us. So that's what I'd like to see. Well, the government has um, come out and they've actually been, um, you know, providing funding for you and that. Uh, have, have you been surprised with how they have uh, come to the party to some extent? Oh, I, I think, yeah, the government understands us. We we don't go and do anything silly. We don't go and claim for anything we shouldn't do. We're straight up, we're honest, and that's what we were from day one. Um, you know, and, and, you know, that's what we've done. And they, they saw us just not mucking around. We don't, I, I think from a, you know, there's, there's quite a bit of criticism of this government. How come councils are running? I, I feel we're doing quite a good job. We're 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 in a really difficult situation. We've had huge rate increases, and I don't know how how we are going to um, get ahead on that. To be quite honest, but but so so a lot of other councils across the country aren't even affected by weather events. So we need help. That's for sure. Moving forward. Yeah. Some people have been saying that 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 you've done something that a lot of people. Uh, have been unable to do. You've uh, shone the spotlight on a fairly isolated uh, district and got the government to um, to take notice. Yeah, I, I think the biggest thing is if you do it in a genuine way. I, I'm very lucky with with my elected members you know, around the table with me. Um, you know, we we understand it, but we we don't we don't get angry. We just, I, I guess, we're like a dripping tap. Or a little foxy biting at the ankles, you know, and, and and but but they know that we're genuine and we're we're a pretty good community, you know. We're we're doing a lot of things I think that other other areas in New Zealand aren't, you know. And you know, there's a lot of squabbles around the country around the Maori wards and things like that. We just went and did it years, you know, well before anyone else and we just get on with it. Well, we'll get on to Maori wards in a moment, but just um just in terms of what you what is your biggest concern uh, or the biggest sticking point with um, with the recovery? I know you've always spoken about the road to Napier and that. What, what's what's going to be done? Is there a, a solution that you think will be viable there? And is it a, something that, that will happen? Yeah, well, I, I came home last night after dropping my daughter off to the airplane or the airport. And, you know, I got probably every red light 
and there was about five of them. So that um, delayed me probably half an hour. It's a pretty frustrating trip. Um, all we all we're asking for, you know, we're not going to get a, a a motorway by any extent, but it's a two way carriageway back. Yeah, and and get onto it. I I do look at the road, Andrew, and I think, you know, you look got to look at it and think, well, we can fix the basics. Why don't we do those first? And we've got passing lanes that are that are still um, coned off cones for Africa where they could fix a few bits in those and get get it to the tar seal and get them open. Do the easy wins first and and we don't seem to be doing that that well. And I haven't travelled that road after, I think I might have mentioned to you, I fell over and broke my leg and yes. um, and it's been probably eight weeks and I probably, apart from a couple of sites, haven't seen a lot of improvement in that time. How's your leg uh, recovery going? No, good. It's been a good rest actually. Oh, um, I think the wife's sick of me, but hey, we're getting there. <laughs> Yeah, good. Now, on the subject of Māori wards, um, as you say, this is something that's happened already with you, but obviously the legislation um, that the government has introduced um, recently, that is going to have an effect. What do you think of, of what they've done in terms of making councils um, have a referendum on this issue? Yeah, I, I think probably the easiest one would have been to have a referendum on whether you got rural wards, um, and you know, all all in one, you know, at, at at large and things like that, and all go to referendum rather than Maori wards. I I can see that you know a lot of people probably think that it's um, you know not necessary and that, but but having a referendum is a good way. But but you know, if you're there are areas in New Zealand that have really poor Maori representation, uh, the the biggest thing I I got out of it here, Andrew, is we, we have really, you know, we, we, we're, we're blessed with elected members, but the three that came through on the Māori wards would have come through in the general wards anyway, but what they've said is it gave them the confidence to stand where they probably wouldn't have put the general And um, how do you think um, your community will vote at the next election in a, in a referendum? Well, they don't have to vote in Wairau because we did that. We went out to... A referendum before we decided because it was causing quite a bit of anxiety. That's the problem. What it does, and a referendum is good, but but in some areas a referendum probably won't work for what you want because um, you know a lot of community may not want it. And if there's only ten percent Maori population, you would hope the others would vote. But but I, I think I, I hope for me the day is going to come. You don't need Maori wards, and it just you know. But but I think that day came many years ago in Wairau because we always put. Put Maori representation around the same as what the um, population makeup was around the table. Yeah, absolutely. Now, um, another question that ke that's been raised again, and you went through this in 2015, amalgamation. And uh, there are people that are starting to talk about this and say, well, things have changed. And now with, with spiralling um, council debt and that, it is a, a um, genuine way to help councils like yourself. What's your view? Yeah. Has, you were staunchly against um, last time. What's your view? Has it changed? Probably hasn't changed too much. I, I want to see a, a shining light that will help us. But but I think what will happen is instead of the debt we have amongst ourselves, we'll just have a massive debt. And there's a lot of mass big councils that are really in a poor shape. So instead of having councils that are, are mediocrely broke, You'll have councils that are really broke or one big Hawks Bay. And, and I'll ask those people who are really pushing for amalgamation, look at how what has happened to Wire with the regional council, how we're not treated the same as the rest of Hawks Bay. How is that going to be different under amalgamation? You know, we're, we're quite remote here in, in um, Wairau. How, how, how are you going to look after us? And um, do you really care or, or will, we, will we be... Um, you know, regard as a little flax mare or a little tamatea or something like that. Um, and so I, I'm not convinced yet. I would love it to work. But, yeah, it, it's, we've got to do a lot of work. But but there is a key too. A lot of things that were funded years back, you know, even in my time, aren't funded anymore from the government. So the funding has changed. Legislation has changed a lot. And they don't always bring the funding with the legislation change. And we have to then, imply, you know, apply all those rules and regulations. And and you just look at the per, per GDP, the spending of local government compared to um, central government, they've gone up on a forty five trajectory. We're with flatline, so it's not all it's not all um, 
council's fault. Yes, there are some that have gone and spent a lot of money on silly stuff, but you still need exciting things in your community as well. And, it, and hopefully, you know, the government can really work realistically, and they have in the past, you know, from the Shane Jones's era, we, we got a lot of good things that really get, put the confidence back into Wairau. Um, so let's hope that it's going to be something like that. But I don't think amalgamation, I think it's going to cause a lot more debt and places like Wairau will fall through the cracks. But having said that, Craig, um, these double digit and in the 20s uh, rates increases, they're not sustainable, are they? No, no, not at all. You know, um, but at the end of the day, you know, a lot of ours is well. We, I think, we were we were inflation and um, cyclone Gabriel expenses, and we'll have the new ones coming on top. That was ten percent before we even started. Yeah. So you know, and I think we're on our long term plan. We were predicted about ten percent, so we've managed to stick to what we said. But it is really hard, and that's where with roading and that you know we need to have a bespoke, bespoke funding that's going to help us councils because at the end of the day we're all part of New Zealand we're not you know we shouldn't be just thinking well that that, that area will sort of zone roading out you know for New Zealand Inc you know I think we're all doing pretty well and places like Wire do pretty well for their contribution to GDP mm -hmm. and I think that could be a big consideration of how the funding should come to us as well. And and just uh, lastly how are things going in Wire how's the the you know you've got as you say you've got a lot uh, against you and and times are tough and that but how things generally go and any other issues that 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 you having to face? Yeah, the big biggest issues we've got, Andrew, is our house like to put a water has been a, a failure. We, we should have kept the DHB. Less you'd focus on the, of, on just the Hawke's Bay region. We're losing you know health services. We've lost our aged care facility. We've got no IHC now. We've got no dentist. We're, we're struggling with dialysis. Mental health is at all time low. And it's just and and just getting down to those appointments is really hard. They don't understand. They can just flick you a letter. We, we don't seem to be keeping up with the times where they could. An example for me, I had broken my leg, and they wanted me in the two weeks to get back to Hawke's Bay and get another X-ray and see a specialist. I said, "Well, can't I get an X-ray in Wairau and maybe do a video call?" And oh no, 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 you can't do that. We really need to see you. But anyway, guess what? They found out they don't need to see me, and a phone call will suffice. And the X-ray was what they wanted to see, but so many people, and that's why statistics in these rural areas are really not good because you just can't get. A lot of people don't even own a car, and you can't get there. You can't even get to your local hospital to get on the van. That only the van is quite. A, it's a great service, great van drive we've got here in Wara, but it's not. It's not easy. Yeah. So, um, what are you doing to sort of try and change this? Is there anything you can do? I mean, you've got a align to government. So are you using this? Yeah, 100%. We've, we've written, we're, we're working with the minister. We've got, a, I don't even know what her name is. She's coming to see us this week, I think, or next week, and to talk about what I've written about. So we really need to just nail it. Around the age old uh, age care, we've got so many people that they're, you know, say if a couple get to an age and one of them's not so well, at least they could have gone to Glen Gary for the day and slept at night, or if they weren't good at sleeping at night, could have brought them home for the day and then gone back to Glenberry every night. These people are now, an example, my my uncle, he he, he lived in Wara most of his life, apart from when he served overseas um, in the army in Korea. In the end, he had to spend his last three or four months dying away out of Wairua. And it was so hard on him. His wife's still down there, my auntie. And, you know, they don't get the same visitors. And, and life becomes really lonely. And you can't, people who have the right to do to, um, live and die in the area that they want to, not not be shipped out of town, and it's just horrible. Yeah. Well, Craig Little, thank you so much for your time and all the best. You've got a lot on your plate, and we'll keep in touch with you, but do appreciate you taking the time to chat to us. No, good, good. And, and Andrew, they, they're not uh, spring box like you said on the wall behind me. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank okay, you. Mate.